Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, December 1st, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Took a look this weekend, actually, at one of our honeypots that we tuned a little bit towards some of the WordPress uh, exploits. And uh, one thing I noticed was more than I expected, uh, attacks against an old PHP unit uh, vulnerability. This was a very straightforward uh, remote code execution. Essentially, a PHP unit sort of comes with a built-in web shell that was exploited back in 2017, or actually, well, is exploited still today, as it turns out. And one thing I noticed is that aside from the WordPress plugins that were targeted, there were couple other uh, packages that apparently sort of were targeted for a PHP unit, not necessarily for a vulnerability of the package itself. A little bit more digging uh, led me to a tool called Composer. If you are familiar with PHP, you heard of Composer. It's a package management tool for PHP that will, like all these package management tools, automatically install dependencies. And turns out that all of uh, these uh, attacked uh, plugins and such have PHP unit as a dependency. So whenever you install uh, the uh, plugin, PHP unit may be installed as well. And it really depends on how you install it. When you are using Composer, you do have the option to specify different environments like a live or production versus a development environment. And in this case, PHP unit is usually installed if you specify that it's a development environment. So this may explain that there are still a lot of uh, these vulnerable uh, PHP unit installs around. They got installed back in the day uh, without the user really noticing that it was installed, maybe on the development system or maybe development uh, features were enabled on a live system. And then of course, not knowing that PHP unit was installed, it just hung around. All of the composer files that I checked had or specified a recent version of PHP unit that was not vulnerable. And the month of November wasn't very kind on Microsoft and Windows Defender or Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. It apparently failed to start on the server edition of the operating system, not on Windows 10 itself. But that wasn't all of it. Earlier today, there were reports of excessive false positives from Windows Defender, at least on the systems where it was running that uh, triggered an Emotet signature. Apparently with Emotet being back, uh, Microsoft did increase the signatures it had for Emotet and some of them are flagging random executables and random Word documents as malicious. This was a specific signature update, so chances are by the time you're listening to this, this may already have been corrected. And F-Secure identified two vulnerabilities in HP printers where one of which could be exploited over the network to execute arbitrary code. The second vulnerability, CVE 2021-39238, is a particular interesting. It's a font parsing vulnerability. Font parsers had numerous issues. We had many, many patches, for example, for Windows for font parsers. And the problem here is that a user, when they're sending a document to a printer, they're not just sending pixels. They may send like PDFs and such that include fonts. And then the printer will parse the the PDF uh, will uh, parse the fonts that are included and due to a buffer overflow, arbitrary code execution is possible here. So to exploit this a document has to be printed. Of course, uh, this could happen uh, if the attacker has access to a exposed 
printer on the network or is able to, for example, gain access to a printer and print a document from a USB stick. Patches are available. Uh, the vulnerability goes back to 2013. So there is a long, long list of devices that are vulnerable. Essentially, if you do have an HP printer, assume it's vulnerable. And we got uh, yet another uh, unpatched Windows flaw, this one affecting Windows 10, not 11, not the server versions. And the CVE number is 2021-24084. The problem here is an arbitrary file read and the vulnerability is, well, relatively straightforward in that it's really one of those temporary file timing attacks. The mobile device management uh, tool that is installed uh, with Windows 10 then has the ability to export log files. Now, the log files are first copied to a temp folder and then uh, combined to a cap file. If the user is fast enough or tries it a couple times, they may be able to use a sim link in the temp folder in order to get the mobile device management tool to extract arbitrary files and make them available to the user. This can, of course, easily then become a privilege escalation vulnerability because, after all, if I can read random files, I may be able to get access to some privilege information that then allows me to escalate privileges. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.